All around us, there's an invisible, limitless world made up of repeating patterns. They're located everywhere in nature. Flowers, mountains, trees, cloud movements, blood vessels, the kidneys, our lungs, and the heart. It's an unending paradox that creates the most beautiful art and at the same time provides the answers to some of the most difficult problems we face in science, math, and technology. Getting tired of guessing? Here's a hint. Count how many triangles you see. Now, count the many more you didn't see. What? There are more? Yes, just like the people in the 1970s when this concept was being introduced, we have trouble understanding that this image is a paradox, but when you think mathematically, it makes sense. Each triangle has an upside down one inside of it. We may only see about 160 triangles originally, but mathematically, there's an infinite number of them. When you find a repeating pattern like this, it's a fractal, and no matter how much you zoom in or out, the object will always look the same. This is an idea called self-similarity. The whole of the fractal looks like a smaller section, then a smaller section of that section looks the same again. The pattern just keeps going. Another example portraying the concept of self-similarity is a tree. The pattern of branching at each branching node is very similar throughout the tree because branches diverge at certain points, from the trunk, to the branches, to the stem. Knowing when branches split, you can actually assign a code to the tree, or any fractal, that can help produce a replica on a computer. Using this, a group of scientists were able to determine the amount of carbon dioxide a whole forest collected and this helped them draw conclusions about global warming problems we face even today. When we look at most of nature, we immediately see complexity. I mean, it doesn't seem to have any straight lines or any pattern. So how can we relate it to a mathematical equation? We've become so used to the math and patterns of human-made structures involving straight lines, smooth edges, circles, pyramids, cubes, and other geometric shapes. So who realized that we could actually assign formulas to nature by visualizing math? The guy is Benoit Mandelbrot. He was a scientist mathematician born in Poland on November 20th, 1924. As a child, he became deeply rooted in the fundamentals of geometry and visual art. But not in the sense of physically drawing with pencil and paper. Instead, he could imagine the images an equation would create on a graph just by looking at it. Mandelbrot said, Think not of what you see, but what it took to produce what you see. By thinking like this, he discovered fractals. Gaston Julia, a French mathematician, was noticing the same phenomenon. He looked at one equation, plugged in an x value, then took the output, which was y, and plugged it back in as x. The y he got out of that was plugged back in as x, and then the y he got from that was plugged in again so on and so forth. When he iterated the equation again and again and again, he got a set of coordinates known as the Julia set. As an example, we'll use x squared plus 1 equals y. So first he plugged in 1 for x. 1 plus 1 equals 2. So then you plug in 2 for x. 4 plus 1 equals 5. Then you plug in 5 for x. You get 26. You plug in 26 for x and you get 677, so on. To construct a set, Gaston used a popular complex polynomial system expressed as the function of z equals z squared plus c. z is a complex number in the form of a plus bi, and c is a constant that he chose. He sampled different z values and determined if there were an infinite number of solutions by iterating the equation. By treating the real and imaginary parts of each number as image coordinates, the pixels were colored on a computer according to how fast sequence diverged, if at all. The real part of the complex number determined whether to move right or left, and the imaginary part determined whether to move up or down on the imaginary axis. And when these points were plotted, they created a beautiful piece of art which never ended. He constructed different equations, each creating a different picture. Here are some examples.
When Mandelbrot studied and learned how this worked, he wanted to make an image that combined all of the Julia sets, so he made the Mandelbrot set in 1980, and the combined image became the emblem of fractal geometry. The most common set looks like this. Okay, so what does this have to do with us in science today? Fractal geometry was first used a long time ago in Japanese art, and today has become a big part of biology and technology. Today, we know the heart has a pattern of cell similarity. The arteries in the heart have a tree-like structure with diverging branches. When looking at a graph of the healthy heartbeat, comparing time, which is x, and beats per minute, which is y, the dynamic shows self-similarity once again. From a 300-minute scale to a 30-minute scale, and then to 3 minutes, you see the same kind of chaotic pattern. You may be looking at each graph and not seeing the self-similarity, but this is because you're looking for a pattern. Instead, the real pattern is resembled by the chaotic dynamics. Look at it like this. Here's a set of heart dynamics. No matter how much you zoom in, there's always a chaotic pattern. In comparison to a normal healthy heart over time, this second graph resembles dynamics from a patient with congestive heart failure. This unhealthy heart has more of an overall pattern, but if you were to zoom up on one section, you may find something that looks like this. When you keep zooming up, you get chaotic graphs, which look nothing like the consistent first one. For this reason, it's not an example of self-similarity, while the healthy heart is. The heart's distinctive fractal pattern could help cardiologists spot heart problems sooner. Fractal geometry could also help detect and diagnose cancer early. This is a network of tiny blood vessels wrapping around and forming with the cancer tumor. It's one early sign of cancer that's difficult to find because conventional imaging techniques like ultrasound don't show the detailed structure of the blood vessels. Ultrasound does, on the other hand, provide a good map of the flow of blood in these vessels. Knowing this, Peter Burns from the University of Toronto made a model of blood flow in the kidney. By viewing the flow of blood under an ultrasound, he made models on the computer. The normal kidney was similar to what you see now, which meant the blood vessels look like this. And this is what he observed with blood vessels feeding a cancerous tumor. Each type of network had completely different fractal patterns. The normal vessels look like a neat, bifurcating tree, while the tumor looked like a mistletoe bush. Both had a fractal pattern, just different kinds. His discovery could someday be used by other biologists and doctors as a way to detect cancer using ultrasound before it grows, without the need of high-tech detailed microscopes. The fractal geometry and self-similarity are all around us through the chaos of it all. It is currently used in telecommunications because when antennas are bent in fractal patterns, they become open to a wider range, allowing for better signal. Fractals are also used to describe the roughness of surfaces such as measuring the jagged edges of a coastline. The small and sharp details of a fractal can closely wrap around the coastline, giving a more precise measurement. They help doctors and scientists understand the body's way of operating by the way different structures look. For example, the bronchial tubes in our lungs, the dynamics of the rhythms of our brain, and the blood vessels throughout our body. And I bet you didn't know that one of the first applications of fractals in computer animations was in the movie Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Who knows, maybe someday fractal geometry could be used to create more efficient solar panels by capturing more sunlight coming in at different angles. It'd be a great source of renewable energy compared to oil or coal, and would clean up our environment. So next time you look at nature, see if you can find fractals in all the chaos.